Hello everyone this is part 10 of what if Naruto was a demigod in the Justice League, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. What Earthlings recognized as the North Star was located at, 300 light years away from Earth. But what very few people on Earth knew was that the Polaris system was also the birthplace of the Tharnagar Empire, one of the most technologically advanced civilizations in the galaxy. When it came to interstellar distances, 300 light years was considered very short. After all, just Milky Way alone was more than 100,000 light years across. With that said, when Naruto inputted the coordinates to trigger the space warp, he knew that their journey was going to be very short, hence also why he had told Wonder Woman he would be back in two to three days tops. Something on your mind, Kurama question mark, Naruto asked without looking at the fox curled up on the co-pilot's seat. Instead, he stared at the spectacle of grey, white and black lights that could be seen through the pit's window, as they travelled through the wormhole. When the fox didn't reply, he said bluntly, Are you bothered by Diana? Question mark. Why would I be bothered by her? Question mark. QB said and opened just one of his eyes to look at him briefly before closing it again, looking as if he was sleeping. I don't know, man. You've been distant as of late. Sometimes we don't see you for days. You've even stopped pestering me for food like you normally do. You're acting weird. That's what worries you question mark that I don't eat question mark, the fox said with a chuckle. There's something on your mind and I know it. Even Diana noticed it and she hasn't known you for as long as I do. A momentary silence was instilled. I just want you to know that you don't have to feel like you're the third wheel or something. You're the most important person in my life, even more than her. We're brothers for life, Kurama. Look at you getting all mushy and sentimental. QB jeered but Naruto who had known the fox for over a century recognized that he was embarrassed. I'm telling you it's not about Diana. Who was the one that liked her from the beginning question Mark tried to remember. It was me. When he heard his words, Naruto realized that his worries were for nothing. He's right, I used to tease him about his infatuation with her belly rubs. He liked her even before me. Come to think of it, didn't he act like a wingman for us question mark Kurama, the matchmaker. He chuckled to himself at that thought. Then what's wrong with you question mark? QB looked like he was debating whether to tell him or not. I, oh come on already, spit it out. Naruto said, getting annoyed at how the fox kept beating around the bush. I'm hearing voices, the fox eventually said, a look of defeat on his face. Naruto looked at him as if to make sure the fox was not messing with him. Are you for real question mark? I don't know what's going on either, okay question mark, QB said in frustration. Maybe you're finally going nuts question mark one mean I wouldn't be so surprised when I look at your age. Naruto said jokingly. That's exactly why I didn't want to tell you. I knew you'd laugh, the fox shouted. All right, all right, sorry. Naruto raised his hands and apologized. It started a few months ago. At first, it happened rarely, once in a while. But it's gotten worse as of late. Now, whenever I'm awake, I hear broken parts of sentences, from multiple voices at the same time and I can't understand what they're saying. It's like a constant buzz in my head. A few months ago question mark him, what could have triggered that question mark? It started happening after we killed the Scions, QB said quietly. Naruto looked at him with a hint of nervousness on his face. You think maybe, maybe the ghosts are haunting you question mark. His sudden meek demeanor made the fox burst into laughter. Though a century passed since he was a teenager, Naruto still showed signs of discomfort when talks about ghosts were brought up. Don't be stupid. Ghosts don't exist, the fox said. MHM. Magic is not real either and gods and demons are myths too, aren't they question mark a fox cub transforming into a mile long behemoth and blowing up a planet is impossible too, isn't it question mark. Point taken. QB admitted, I think we'll have to visit Dr. Fate when we come back. He's a sorcerer, he might know something about this voodoo stuff. Asterism. I'm aware of how rare and valuable Absorbaskans are but that is not enough to pay for my services, Naruto said. 
The winged man sitting across the table frowned behind his golden helmet. It was one of the envoys of the ruling council of Tharnagar, sent to seal the deal with the mercenary caterpillar. Your information broker said that the payment was just fine, the Tharnagarian said. For espionage question mark yes. But for assassination question mark not even close. Regular assassination missions can cost up to four times more. They can be even more expensive than that, depending on the difficulty and other circumstances, like you wanting me to pose as a Gordanian to make them think that there was a traitor in their ranks that killed their commander and so discord. Initially, the bounty was supposed to be about Naruto breaking into one of Gordanian's asteroid bases in the Vega system and stealing their intelligence. A simple espionage mission. With his henge or his camouflage jutsu, the one that made him almost invisible, espionage missions were a piece of cake for him. But now, the Tharnagarians wanted him to also assassinate the commander of the Gordanian forces stationed in that asteroid base. The envoy kept being pushy and trying to convince him to take the job for nearly 15 minutes. Eventually, getting annoyed, Naruto said, I don't negotiate my jobs like in a bazaar. You don't get to haggle over the price of my services. If you don't like it, hire someone else. His words would make strangers who heard him think that he was full of himself but Caterpillar was one of the most sought-after mercenaries in the Milky Way galaxy and beyond. His information brokers had enough deals for him to work for several years without running out of bounties. It was not Caterpillar who had to beg for jobs but it was his employers that had to beg him to work for them. His nigh-perfect mission record and his good name made him a very desired bounty hunter. The fame he had built for himself over the past century as an intergalactic mercenary was nothing to scoff at. The envoy gave up. What is your price then question mark? For a pure espionage mission, as we've agreed beforehand, an Absorbaskin is enough. But if you want me to impersonate a Gordanian and assassinate the commander of the asteroid base, I want something more. I want the North Metal. The Tharnagarian jumped to his feet as if burned. Impossible. He almost shouted. NTH Metal was unique in the universe. It was the Tharnagar Empire's most prized possession. While weapons forged from the North Metal could not be said to be sentient, the fact remained that unless one bonded with the metal, they would not be able to bring out its full capabilities. In the hands of a regular person, the weapon would just be a durable tool with the propriety to disrupt magic. However, North Metal possessed many other miraculous abilities that would surface only after one bonded with it. Abilities such as increasing the self-regeneration of the wielder, granting him the ability to fly, the ability to store energy for later use and so on. However, the method to bond with North Metal was known only by the Tharnagarians. It was their pride and the secret of their power. Naruto shrugged his shoulders and stood up. Then I guess our conversation is over. The Thangarian also stood up and said in a hurry. W wait. Giving you North Metal is impossible. For thousands of years, we've never given it to an outsider. But we can give you anything else, you name it. We can even give you a position as a vassal to the Empire, to rule over one of our colonies if authority is what you desire. The envoy looked at the mercenary as if to gauge his reaction but because of the white fox mask he was wearing, he could not see his face. Nervously, he added quickly. Or maybe something of value question mark advanced weaponry, ancient artifacts, the newest model of military spaceships, precious minerals or I don't care about that stuff. The North Metal is the only thing that interests me. Either that or nothing, Naruto cut him off and said. Ever since he had come to terms with the fact that he could not find a way back home, he stopped caring as much about wealth because he no longer needed to finance expeditions across the universe and in the void outside the 3,600 sectors. Nowadays, he only cared about bounties that had interesting rewards for him. In the end, the two of them could not come to terms and the deal fell apart. Asterism. Damn, I wasted time and fuel for nothing, Naruto grumbled during the space warp on his way back to Earth. Then again, it was not exactly the first time a deal fell apart due to his employers thinking that his price was too high so he was not disheartened about it. He was just annoyed that he had missed out on watching Wonder Woman's sleeping face that morning for no reason. But his mood brightened when the ship came out of the wormhole and a blue planet could be seen in the distance. When he got closer to the exosphere of the planet, two spaceships barred his way. The watchtower had detected him and some of the Justice League's members came to check who he who. Nonetheless, being in a relationship with Wonder Woman meant that there was nobody in the Justice League who had not heard of him before. 
he was allowed access without any difficulties. As he flew towards the northeastern coast of the USA, he thought about the dense network of satellites surrounding the planet. It looks like security is even tighter than when I came to Earth the first time. I should have a talk with Diana about this. Asterism. Hey, I've returned. Already question mark you said you'd be away for two to three days. Diana's surprised voice came from the other end of the line. The deal fell apart. They thought I was asking for too much. Never mind that. Where are you question mark? He asked. Currently, he was in Wonder Woman's apartment in New York but she was not there despite that it was late in the evening. At the hospital wing. Are you okay question mark? Who happened? Who hurt you question mark? Naruto asked quickly. Relax, dummy, I'm okay. But Batman isn't. Superman beat him badly, to an inch of his life. The hell? Question mark. I know, right question mark we've never seen that coming either. It was so out of the blue. Earlier today, Superman went and destroyed his Batcave and beat him into a coma. Batman is still unconscious. The Justice League is looking for Superman everywhere but he's nowhere to be found. As he talked to her, he also turned on her laptop and searched on the internet to see if the general population got wind of what had transpired. But, to his surprise, it looked like they more than found what happened. Do you know there's even a video of how Superman beat up Batman? Question mark. Yes, I watched it too. I don't understand how in the world the mass media got their hands on that. It makes no sense. The Batcave is a secure place, not known by anyone. The only logical explanation would be that someone close to Batman secretly filmed the scene and posted it. But that makes no sense either because the only person he's close to would easily trade his life for him if needed. Though Wonder Woman and Naruto were together and extremely close to each other, she never divulged her teammate's identity to him and he had also never put her in a rough position by asking her to do it. The Justice League's civilian identities were their secrets and she would never betray their trust. That's why she did not say Alfred's name when she spoke of the person close to Batman. Are you aware of the network of satellites monitoring the Earth? Question mark, Naruto asked. I meant to talk to you about this a few weeks ago but other things came up and I forgot about it until recently. You mean the watchtower? Question mark. No, I'm talking about the other several thousands of smaller satellites orbiting the Earth. On the other end of the phone call, Diana became silent. I noticed it the first time I came to Earth but it looks like the number increased over the past few months. You should talk about it with the rest of the Justice League. If you're not in control of it, then it means that someone has been watching all your movements for a long time already. The video of Batman dropping that guy from the rooftop and then the video of Superman beating him up in the Batcave, only someone in control of that network of satellites would be able to get them. Even if an enemy is controlling that network of satellites, how would they get a hold of a video from Batman's Batcave, a secret location known to only a handful of people? Question mark. If someone can control so many satellites at once, how hard do you think it would be for them to hack someone's device and use the camera installed in it? Question mark. For all we know, they could use your phone's camera and mic or your laptop's webcam. Anything. Is something like that even possible? Question mark. Wonder Woman asked a little shocked by the huge implications. A human might not be capable of doing it but what about a machine question mark there are ash out there capable of doing incredible things. Brainiac, the one who destroyed the Kryptonians was an AI too. The Justice League needs to investigate this seriously. Someone has been pulling the strings from the shadows for a long time. The manipulation of the public opinion against the Justice League and the anti-metahuman movement that escalated in the past few months are probably related to that guy too. Asterism. In the wee hours of the morning, Batman woke up. He tried to sit up but he fell back and let out a groan at the feeling of pain racking his body. The sound he made attracted the attention of Martian Manhunter who was sitting on a stool next to his bed. He was the only one who stayed overnight to watch over him. Don't try to sit up. You have a broken neck and multiple rib fractures. Superman almost killed you. At the Martian's words, Batman became aware of the cast around his neck and the bandages wrapped around his body. He looked like a mummy. It was the most brutal beating that he had ever taken in his life. It wasn't Superman, Batman said in a raspy voice. His throat was sore. Martian Manhunter took a bottle of water from the nightstand and helped him drink from it. It wasn't him question mark but there's even a video of how he attacked you. It was him, 
but he was not in control of himself. Someone is mind controlling him. A grave expression appeared on the Martian's face. If it's going to be a repeat of what happened when Darkseid brainwashed him, people would never forgive him again. He has to be stopped, Batman said. It was as if he was more worried about Superman's situation than the fact that his entire body was one big bruise and that he had multiple broken bones. The Justice League is looking for him but he's nowhere to be found, Martian Manhunter said. With gritted teeth, Batman forced himself into a standing position. When the Martian tried to stop him, he glared at him. You can either help me get up or stand aside. But your injuries are very serious this time. If you don't. John. Batman rarely called anyone by their real names. It showed how urgent was the situation. If I get access to a computer, I will find Superman in a matter of minutes, no matter where he is hiding. Though he was still hesitating, Martian Manhunter took Batman in his arms and carried him to the supercomputer in the Watchtower's control room. Worried looks were thrown their way by the Justice League members that they encountered after they left the hospital wing. Everyone knew what had happened to him. His face was glistening with cold sweat from the pain coursing through his body as he stood on the chair in front of the computer but he just clenched his teeth and endured. He started operating the computer and a window with a username and a password section appeared. But after filling the boxes, a red text appeared on the screen. Administrator rights revoked. Access denied. What question mark? How is this possible question mark? Batman shouted and slammed his fists on the keyboard. Even someone as composed and as in control of his emotions as he was greatly disturbed by the new development. The network of thousands of satellites orbiting the Earth that Naruto spoke to Diana about had been created by Batman. He was also the one who created the artificial intelligence that administrated it. However, now, he could no longer access it. He had lost control of it. Are you saying you've been spying on us the whole time? Question mark. Green Lantern shouted incensed. He was not the only one. Even a good-natured person like Flash was disturbed by the news. Martian Manhunter was frowning deeply too. But Wonder Woman was not that taken aback by the news because she had always been aware of Batman's deep mistrust towards other people. Furthermore, Naruto had already warned her about the network of satellites. Although the Justice League had over 100 members at present, it was still only the old members that led it. With Hawkgirl retired and gone back to her homeworld and with Superman's whereabouts unknown, there were only five of them in the conference room now. And Batman had just revealed to them that he had been working behind their backs for months, that he had created an AI to spy on all metahuman activity on Earth. We've trusted you, Batman. I trusted you, Flash said. We've been together for years, through many hardships. What made you think we'd ever betray the Justice League? Question mark for me. The Justice League is not just a team or an organization, it is like my family. Martian Manhunter also said. Even Batman's stoic expression briefly crumbled at the Martian's words. But he steeled his face and said. It is because we've been together for so long that I know everyone very well. In the eyes of ordinary people, you are like gods. What would happen if, one day, one of you went rogue like Superman did a few years ago and killed hundreds in Metropolis under Darkseid's control? Or like he beat me into a coma just yesterday because someone else was controlling him. You said it yourself. Someone else is controlling him. He'd never do something like this willingly. Green Lantern said. Wouldn't he question mark did you all forget about the Justice Lords question mark it took only Flash's death for them to do a 180 degree turn and take over the government. And don't tell me that we are different. Because we're not. They were just like us in the beginning. Batman shot back. The rest became momentarily silent at his words. Now, the Justice League has over 150 members. Most of them are metahumans, people with superpowers. The Justice League has grown more than powerful enough to take over the Earth in a matter of days. How do you keep in check so many superhumans when they are operating all over the world? Question mark. How do you make sure they are not abusing their power? Question mark. How do you prepare for the possibility that one of them could go rogue? Question mark. One had to create a system to keep an eye on them. To make sure that I would be able to prevent that from happening. And look how well that worked for us, Wonder Woman eventually retorted. Someone stole your AI from you and now the mass media has direct access to exclusive videos of you dropping people off buildings and Superman going berserk. And you should know very well that this is only the tip of the iceberg. 
Whoever is in control of that AI now has become one of the most dangerous people in the world. Batman looked like he wanted to say something but he stopped. The mood in the conference room was extremely tense. Asterism. Later that day, back to her apartment in New York, Wonder Woman was sitting at her desk with a piece of paper and a pen in her hands. Every once in a while, she noted down some of her thoughts. It all started when Lois Lane and Superman broke up. She thought and wrote it on the paper. 1. Lois Lane and Superman broke up. Then, she started slandering him and the Justice League in the media, writing biased articles against us. 2. Lois Lane's petty revenge. If I'm not mistaken, it was also around that time that Superman became more violent. He broke someone's legs in Metropolis. Normally, he's extremely careful with his power and pulls back his punches to not hurt people. 3. Superman becomes more violent. 4. Maxwell Lord stops financing the Justice League. 5. Maxwell Lord and Lois Lane become engaged. 6. Superman almost kills Batman and goes missing. 7. Batman reveals he created an AI named, Brother, and a monitoring system to spy on everyone. He lost control of it too. She was trying to see what triggered Superman into acting the way he did. She rested her head on her hands and her forehead scrunched in thought. Is Lois Lane the one that caused everything? Question mark. She quickly denied that idea. No, she's just a journalist. A petty and vindictive woman, but that is the extent of it. She doesn't have the resources or capability to orchestrate something of this magnitude. Her eyes fell on the other name that appeared in her notes, Maxwell Lord. Is he related to this question mark? It does look like he's the one that riled up Superman by stopping his support to the Justice League and then taking Lois Lane. But she shook her head. She did not have enough information. She could not just randomly throw the blame onto someone without any evidence. I don't have any evidence but my gut feeling is telling me he is somehow involved in this mess. He is a billionaire, he has the resources and power to take over Batman's AI. Ah, she let out a sound as she suddenly remembered something. John also said that when Maxwell offered his support to the Justice League, he could not read his mind and see his real intentions. She let her head fall on the desk with a thud and a long sigh came out of her mouth. But correlation is not causation. Am I reading too much into it? Question mark, she asked herself out loud. Goddess Athena had blessed her with wisdom but that did not mean that Wonder Woman could magically find the answer to any dilemma. She could not draw any reliable conclusions without having enough information. After all, Maxwell Lord had not been caught doing anything illegal. Her suspicions were purely based on her instinct. She knew that he could very well be innocent and have nothing to do with it. She jumped a little when two heavy but gentle hands landed on her shoulders. She did not need to turn around and ask who it was because she recognized the person behind her from their subtle smell. A sigh of comfort came from her when those calloused hands started to softly knead the stiff muscles of her neck and shoulders. It's very late already, you need some rest. Come to bed, Naruto said as he massaged her shoulders. Um, she groaned when he pressed on a particular sore spot of her muscles. Originally, she was going to refuse him as she was still too worried about the situation the Justice League was going through but she quickly became putty in his hands. She turned around with her chair and raised her arms up, her eyes looking up at him pleadingly. It was not hard for him to guess what she wanted. You big baby, he said but he took her in his arms. Her legs naturally came around his waist and her arms around his neck. He hugged her lovingly and she buried her face into the crook of his neck, nuzzling him. Before meeting Naruto, Diana had not known the joys of being pampered by someone, the feeling of being showered with love and affection. But once she had gotten a taste of it, she could not get enough of it. She latched onto him as he carried her to the bedroom. But when he put her down and was about to let go, her arms and legs would not let him leave. Good grief, when did you become so spoiled? Question mark, he said teasingly but he laid down with her in bed. She turned around on her side and pressed her back against his chest. Hug me, Naruto. She just wanted to cuddle. He spooned her and embraced her from behind. But she took the arm that was around her waist and brought it up, hugging it to her chest. Is that a flashlight in your pocket or you're just happy to hug me? Question mark. She said a bit later when she felt something stiff against her bum and both of them started laughing. You know exactly what you're doing. He accused her. 
pressed flush against him and with how she hugged his hand in the valley of her s, there was no way his body would not react to her actions. He was a healthy man too. Silence was instilled again after they stopped chuckling. Baby question mark, Diana called out. Yes question mark. Don't you wanna do it question mark. She bit softly into her lower lip. They had been living together for a few weeks already. Although they had agreed to take things slowly, it was becoming almost impossible for both of them to hold themselves back. Behind her serious exterior, Diana was a very passionate woman and Naruto too was the kind of person who once he gave his heart to someone, would dedicate to them 100%. I just wanted to meet your mother first. I wanted to ask her formally for your hand before we went to the next level. To do this the right way. She turned around in his arms to face him. When they looked at each other, they realized that they were both slightly red. You wanted to ask her for my hand question mark marriage question mark, she asked. She had a good idea what his answer was going to be but her blood still started to rush just at the thought of hearing him say it. Though he could feel his face starting to burn, he did not chicken out. Yes, because I love you. Diana's stomach twisted in a funny manner. He was showing through his actions every day how much he cared for her. Listening to her talking about her day and her worries related to her hero work, sometimes preparing breakfast for her and serving it in bed, hugging her and caressing her, kissing her, and other minor things that he was doing unconsciously but she took notice of. However, this was the first time that he had actually told her that he loved her. At that moment, the princess understood what it meant for one to have butterflies fluttering in their stomach. She hugged his wide back and rubbed her face against his chest as she mumbled something. Quote dot 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 quote. What was that question mark one couldn't hear it. She raised her face and looked up at him. She thought that he deserved to hear her say it clearly too. I love you too, Naruto. Seeing how his face lit up like a Christmas tree made a warm feeling course through her body. It was not often that she got to see such an innocent and happy smile from him. Bringing her hand up, she caressed his scarred cheek and he closed his eyes and leaned into her gentle touch. The love she felt for him was almost overflowing. She could not help taking his lips in a long but slow and passionate kiss. Then, she nuzzled her face into his neck and hugged him a bit tighter, pressing herself flush against him. He embraced her in return as well, gently rubbing circles on her back. The time they spent in the evenings cuddling like that had become a source of strength for her to tackle the stress and exhaustion of her daily life as a superhero, especially during the current events. Just the idea and the mental image that he was waiting for her at home every day encouraged her in these trying times. Falling asleep in each other's arms was healing both her tired body and mind. Not knowing when, he had become a constant in her life, a pillar of support. Asterism. Wake up. A distant voice rang in her mind as she slept. Wonder Woman. Because of the insistent voice, she was eventually woken up. An emergency came up. We need you at the watchtower. Diana let out a sigh of frustration. What is it now? John question mark one have a day off today and there are plenty of other superheroes. Surely you don't need me now. Especially at this hour, she spoke in her mind, replying to the Martian. Looking at the digital clock on the nightstand, she saw that it was 5 a.m. The sky was completely dark, it was snowing, and the sleeping Naruto next to her radiated such warmth that she wanted nothing more than to just lay there in bed, basking in the comfort of his arms. I'm sorry to bother you, but this is urgent. Blue Beetle was murdered. She stood up with a groan. I'll be there in 15 minutes. Asterism. We received a tip from an anonymous source that gunshots were heard from Maxwell Lord's office in Coast City four hours ago, Martian Manhunter said. He was in the control room of the watchtower alongside Captain Atom, Wonder Woman, Green Arrow and Vixen. There may have been a total of 150 heroes enlisted in the Justice League but they were not working all at the same time and most of the active superheroes at that hour were working in the field. There were very few of them stationed at the watchtower. The Martian operated the computer and a few photos of the crime scene appeared on the screen. What do you mean anonymous question mark, Green Arrow asked. We don't know their identity. But we could not just ignore their intel so a team was sent to check its veracity. And it was true, when they reached Coast City, they found Blue Beetle dead. His body was still warm, which means that the murder was very recent. Who are the suspects? Question mark, Captain Atom asked. 
and what was Blue Beetle doing there in the middle of the night? Question mark. Maxwell is no longer working with the Justice League. Unless he and Maxwell had a special relationship, him being there would be trespassing. We don't know about the connection between Blue Beetle and Maxwell Lord. It's also too early to tell who killed him. But, strangely enough, the security agents acted as if they had not heard anything at all. I've read their minds too, they really don't know anything. They were shocked to find out someone was murdered inside of their boss office. Martian Manhunter said. Where is Maxwell now? Question mark, Wonder Woman asked. His secretary claims that he left on a business trip to Europe, Switzerland, to one of his overseas companies a few hours ago. I'll go speak with him, she said. If he had anything to do with Blue Beetle's death, my lasso will compel him to tell the truth. Wonder Woman had already been inwardly suspicious of the billionaire before. Hearing Martian Manhunter say that Blue Beetle was murdered in Maxwell Lord's office and that he suddenly left the country was all the confirmation she needed. I will go to the crime scene and see if I can pick any familiar scents, Vixen said. I'll come with you. Captain Atom offered and Vixen nodded in agreement. After Martian Manhunter gave her the location of Maxwell Lord's company from Switzerland, Wonder Woman took a javelin and flew from the watchtower back to Earth, to Europe. Asterism. You'll forgive me for saying it, princess, but you look good on your knees. Those condescending words came from a brown-haired man dressed in black cargo pants and a black t-shirt. He was standing with his arms behind his back, looking down at Wonder Woman with an arrogant smirk on his face. He was Maxwell Lord. In front of him, the Man of Steel was forcing Wonder Woman to kneel on the floor with a hand clenched around her wrist and another around her neck. When she arrived at Maxwell's corporation and entered his office, Superman attacked her before she had the time to react. Because she had not expected a violent altercation out of the blue, the berserk Kryptonian overwhelmed her with his superior strength. And I want you to stay that way, on your knees, the billionaire said before he told Superman in a commanding voice, let her go. She'll stay down. But the smugness on his face faltered when Wonder Woman did not fall to his mind control ability after Superman let her go and stood up instead. I see with a god's eyes and understand with a god's wisdom. Your powers will not work on me, Maxwell. Despite his initial surprise, Maxwell recomposed himself. Though the Amazon was standing now, he was not in the least worried. After all, Superman was known as the greatest and most powerful member of the Justice League, and his control over Superman was absolute. Hmm, I didn't really think it would work. But you can't blame a guy for trying. Wonder Woman turned towards the glazed-eyed Superman and pleaded. Superman. Cal. Listen to me. You can fight him. Maxwell laughed. No, he can't. He believes what I want him to believe, he sees what I want him to see. As on cue, Superman showed a desperate expression on his face and shouted. Ma. Pa. Wonder Woman suddenly grabbed Maxwell by the collar of his shirt and punched him so hard that she sent him flying to the other side of the room. What are you doing to him? Question mark. What are you making him see? Question mark. She shouted and she raised her fist looking like she was going to punch him again. He's seeing Darkseid, in the midst of murdering his beloved Ma and Pa, his adoptive parents. Should I add more flavor to it? Question mark. All right, I'll have him see Supergirl die too, Maxwell said with difficulty but his face was stretched by an ugly grin despite the blood coming from his broken nose. Kara. Superman screamed at that moment as in the illusion shown to him by Maxwell Lord, he witnessed Supergirl dying under Darkseid's Omega Beams. Free him. Wonder Woman also shouted but Maxwell looked at her with eyes filled with ridicule. Why would I do that question mark one have absolute control of Superman, something that not even Lex Luthor has been able to manage despite that he's been trying for years. And before you think that knocking me out or beating me up is the answer, let me tell you, it isn't. Because eventually, I'll wake up, if only for a moment. And when I do, Superman will dance for me again. He stood up from the spot where he had been thrown with an air of sublime confidence and satisfaction around him. It's taken me months to achieve this. Meticulous planting of suggestions and images in Lois Lane's mind and his. It wasn't that hard, mind you, to manipulate someone as ambitious as her. But I had to do it. To isolate him. To frustrate him. To weaken his mind. I've thrown away billions of dollars, sponsoring, the Justice League and I hired dozens of hackers to sabotage Batman's AI. All that, just so I could get close to Superman and be in contact with him. But I did it and there is no turning back. 
As long as I live, Superman is mine to control. What was your reasoning question mark why did you do all the question mark what do you have to gain from it question mark you have everything a man could have possibly ever wanted. Why question mark because what chance does humanity have against someone like you or someone like him question mark what chance does the earth have against metahumans against you who are gods among regular people question mark Maxwell said. But that is enough talking for now. There's nothing you can say or do to change my mind. And you have just run out of time. As his words ended, it was only Wonder Woman's honed reflexes that made her raise her bracelets in front of her, just in time to block the deadly beam of heat from the Man of Steel's eyes. Superman, no. Fight against it, she shouted. But the Kryptonian was too far gone. His eyes were bloodshot, veins were pulsating like small snakes on his temples and a crimson light burned around his eyes, ready to blast a beam as hot as the sun at any moment. An enraged scream came out of his chest and he lunged at her filled with bloodlust. He was not seeing a white and gold armored Amazon. In his eyes, she was Darkseid, the one who had just murdered everyone that he had ever cared about. Superman, no. Fight against it, she shouted. But the Kryptonian was too far gone. His eyes were bloodshot, veins were pulsating like small snakes on his temples and a crimson light burned around his eyes, ready to blast a beam as hot as the sun at any moment. An enraged scream came out of his chest and he lunged at her filled with bloodlust. He was not seeing a white and gold armored Amazon. In his eyes, she was Darkseid, the one who had just murdered everyone that he had ever cared about. He screamed his parents' names. Supergirl's name. He was mad with rage. Both of his hands clenched around her neck and the building's upper floors collapsed as he smashed his way through them with Wonder Woman headfirst against them. He pierced through the atmosphere at a speed that made the air explode with ear-deafening booms behind them. In but a second, the earth became tiny under their feet. He was holding nothing back. In his madness, he was going to throw her into the sun. Her hands clenched around his wrists, struggling with all her strength to free herself from his grasp. But he was too powerful. And the closer they got to the sun, the stronger he became. Still screaming at her, Superman's eyes became crimson red and the skin on her face started to burn and peel off as his heat beams bore into her flesh. She felt her bones melting. She clenched her hands around his head and her thumbs dug into his eyes, making his heat vision explode into his eyes. He shouted in pain and the agony made him let go of her. Hermes, give me speed. She prayed as she plunged back towards the earth which looked like nothing but a small marble from how far away it was. They were in space. She couldn't breathe. She was running out of air. She had to go back into Earth's atmosphere as fast as possible. The vacuum of space did not hinder her speed. There was no air to create friction. She flew faster than spaceships, faster than she had ever flown in her life. In the blink of an eye, she reached the exosphere of the planet. Hope grew in her heart. But she celebrated too early. Ushing a murderous spirit and with his body filled with yellow radiation from his previous proximity to the sun, the Kryptonian's vicious punch smashed into her face with the force of a star. Red crystals appeared as the blood that burst out from her mouth was instantly frozen in space. She blacked out for a moment. In that moment of unconsciousness, Maxwell Lord's face flashed in her mind. He was looking at her from above, smirking smugly and gloating at her defeat. But the heat of the thermosphere brought her back when her body re-entered the planet's atmosphere. However, it was too late for her to stop her descent. A cataclysmic shockwave cleared the sky of clouds for dozens of miles when she smashed into a mountain. The rocks caved in as if they were mud and an enormous crater was formed into the side of the mountain as if a bomb had exploded in it. At the center of it, Wonder Woman lay unmoving, seemingly dead, her body still burning. Asterism. This is what happens when the gods fight, brother, do you understand question mark mortals suffer. Maxwell Lord said. He was speaking to a device that he was holding in his hand. It looked almost like a cell phone. On its screen, there was only the simple image of an eye. Clarify, a robotic voice came from the device. It was brother I, the AI that Batman had created and Maxwell controlled now. Fortunately, she had fallen into a deserted area, into the mountains, in Chile. Can you imagine the devastation if she had come down in a city like Metropolis, Tokyo, or Moscow? Question mark the catastrophic loss of life? Question mark These people are in control of humanity's destiny, brother, and this is why they must be eliminated. Look at him, 
Maxwell said and gestured towards the screen that was playing the live footage of Superman's and Wonder Woman's fight. Look at all the punishment he's dishing on her. Imagine if he turned his power against us. But wait, you don't need to imagine. Just search for the files and stored data on what happened in Metropolis several years ago, how many people he murdered. Hundreds of them. What I've done to him took time, it took effort. But the mere fact that I could do it at all proves my point. Because it's not the first time it happened. If I can do it, someone else can, too, and that's the heart of it, brother. Superman, Wonder Woman, the rest of them, they are too powerful, too dangerous to be left alive. They will kill us all if we don't eliminate them first. Asterism. With difficulty, Wonder Woman crawled up to her feet on shaky legs. And there he stood, at the edge of the crater, his face as twisted with rage as in the beginning. What you did to my parents, what you did to Kara, I'll make sure you'll never do it to anyone else ever again. He shouted. Superman, please, I'm not your enemy. But he was deaf to her pleading voice, too lost, too immersed in the illusion shown to him by Maxwell Lord. He was not going to stop until, Darkseid, was dead. His chest inflated and then he blew out a gust of frozen air. It was his ice breath. It encased her entire body in a block of ice before she could even react. It's too late to ask for mercy now. You didn't show any mercy when you killed my ma and pa either. You're just a rabid animal that needs to be put down. As he said that, the Kryptonian smashed his fist into a cliff on the mountain and broke off a huge chunk of it. Then, he hurled it with all his strength into the crater where Wonder Woman had been frozen. But when the ice and the rock were smashed to smithereens, the Amazon princess remains were nowhere to be seen. Even in his rage-clouded mind, he understood that she had gotten away at the last moment. There's nowhere to hide. Nowhere you can run, he said and then he stood still, focusing on his super hearing. Somewhere away from Superman's line of sight, Wonder Woman was breathing heavily, trying to catch her breath. Her entire body was an aching bruise. She had barely survived when she had been smashed into the planet like a meteorite. He's too strong. He has so many abilities. His speed, power, invulnerability, heat vision, super hearing. But as her line of thought reached that point, a flash of inspiration hit her. But every strength can be turned into a weakness. When he stops speaking and stands still, I know he's using his super hearing. The sound of wind being displaced by a fast-moving object reached Superman's ears but he was just a little too late to react in time. Wonder Woman's bracelets of submission slammed into his ears at the same time. The gong-like sound that followed almost turned Wonder Woman herself deaf, to say nothing of Superman who had been using his super hearing at that moment. He collapsed on the ground with his hands holding his ears and screaming in agony. Blood was flowing from his ears, his eardrums had burst. Despite the immense pain he was going through, he tried to stand up. But she was not going to give him the chance. As a warrior, she knew when to take advantage and press on, regardless of whether it was honorable or not. There was no such thing as a fair fight in a life and death battle. Her shin smashed into his temple, and the Kryptonian was thrown back to the ground. Relentlessly, he tried to stand up again but another vicious kick to the back of his knees made him lose his footing and he half kneeled on the ground. In the next instant, a powerful cross slugged him in the face and the man of steel was smashed face first into the ground. He was powerful, incredibly so, but she was not too far below him in strength as to make her fighting techniques useless. And when it came to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, there was nobody on earth more skilled than her, a warrior who had honed her martial arts for thousands of years. Though the last punch almost rocked the Kryptonian hard, she knew better than anyone just how durable he was. That was nowhere near enough to put him out. Her hand wrapped around the handle of the god-slaying sword strapped to her waist. But she stopped herself. No, he's not the enemy. She had to hold back. She could not use her sword against him. She did not want to kill him. Bearing that thought in mind, she grabbed her lasso of truth instead. If I could catch him, just for a second, it would be enough for my lasso to clear his mind and stop his madness. However, that short moment of indecision on her part was enough for Superman to gather his wits and recover. When Wonder Woman threw her lasso at him, he disappeared in a burst of speed. Flying faster than the naked eye could follow, the Kryptonian rushed at her and swung his fist wildly. A shockwave exploded from the impact of his fist clashing against her forearm as she blocked his punch. 
Her bracelet absorbed his hit. Seeing his all-out punch blocked, Superman's eyes glowed crimson red and he fired his heat beams but the Amazon's other arm came forward and her elbow smashed into his temple, making his heat beams miss their target when his head was rocked to the side. Taking advantage of the short moment when he wobbled back from the force of the elbow that had crashed into his temple, Wonder Woman raised her hand and threw her lasso at him. However, to her surprise, he grabbed her right wrist when she had least expected it. The Kryptonian may have been an unskilled brute in the eyes of a trained martial artist like her but he was not stupid. Seeing how she single-mindedly tried to ensnare him with her lasso, he took advantage of it. Putting his entire strength into it, Superman abruptly twisted her arm and Wonder Woman screamed in pain when her wrist snapped. He followed up with a swing of his punch, all the way from the back, intent on finishing her off with it. But she headbutted him in the face, her golden tiara smashing right into his nose. An audible crunch was heard when the Kryptonian's nose cartilage was crushed and he stumbled back on rubber legs as his vision momentarily became white from the pain. He was not allowed a moment to rest as her high-heeled greaves smashed into his stomach, making his body bend like a parenthesis as he was hurled off the top of the mountain. Wonder Woman grabbed her broken wrist with her other hand and clenched her teeth in pain. It was a foreign sensation to her. It was the first time she had broken a bone. It was the first time that someone had hurt her that badly. I was a fool for thinking that I could hold back against someone like him. He's too powerful. She no longer hesitated. The first time she had hesitated, it had allowed Superman to recover himself and he turned the tables on her by breaking her arm. She was not going to make the same mistake twice. The bracelets of submission were a godly artifact that the Olympian god of forging, Hephaestus, had crafted for the champion of the Amazons from Zeus' shield, Aegis. They were indestructible. They had served her in her battles over the years, protecting her from attacks that could have been lethal. However, ever since she found out about her true power and heritage, the bracelets also served as a limiter for her. As her mother, Hippolyta, had instructed her, ever since that day, Diana had never taken them off, not even while bathing or sleeping. It was the only way for her to hide her identity as a demigoddess, as Zeus' daughter, the only way to stay hidden from Hera's eyes. But she could no longer afford to suppress her powers. Fighting to kill was much easier than fighting to subdue. If she wanted to subdue him without killing him, she needed more strength. Decisively, Diana took off her bracelets. The moment the bracelets fell on the ground, an exhilarating feeling washed over her and she involuntarily closed her eyes. It was as if a weight was lifted off her chest and she could finally breathe freely, for the first time in her life. A rush of energy suddenly came from the earth beneath her feet. It was Goddess Demeter's blessing. As long as her feet touched the ground, the earth would supply her with unlimited strength and stamina. The burnt flesh wound on her face from Superman's heat vision began to heal and close up at a speed visible to the naked eye, and even her snapped wrist righted itself and the injured bones of her hand were mended. She was still marveling at what happened when the enraged Kryptonian appeared in front of her, leaving sonic booms in his wake. The entire mountainside quaked from the cataclysmic shockwave of the two godlike individuals clashing against each other. But the result was far from what Superman had expected. His fist was firmly caught in Wonder Woman's hand and she did not budge even an inch from her spot. It was like an unstoppable force meeting an immovable object. But the Kryptonian screamed and it was like his rage amplified his strength sevenfold. His other hand clenched around her neck and he smashed her into the mountain and flew with her through it until they broke through the other side. A massive landslide followed and a fifth of the over 10,000 foot tall mountain crumbled in the wake of the destruction. They smashed from one mountain into another, leveling their peaks and creating landslides and avalanches as they crashed with their bodies into them in their violent power struggle. Despite her releasing her true power as a demigoddess, the Kryptonian was not falling behind in the least. It was like his strength was infinite. But as Superman continued to smash with her into the mountains, her heavy punches rained down onto his face repeatedly. Even with his incredible durability, after the tenth punch, his face became a bloodied mess. A particularly painful hit landed on his already broken nose and the pain made him almost black out for a second. That was the moment when Wonder Woman managed to get away from his grasp. Spittle came out of her mouth as she coughed. He had almost strangled her to death. The enraged man of steel was like a juggernaut. No matter how hard she hit him, he was too durable. Even with her enhanced strength, 
When her power grew, it felt as though his strength multiplied as well. With the sun brightly shining above their heads, his supply of power was infinite. This isn't going anywhere. At this rate we'll beat each other to the death, she thought. She could increase her healing factor and draw strength from the earth but Superman was in no way below her, he was doing the same by absorbing the energy of the sun. And although her fighting technique was unmatched, it could be said the same about his durability. In the end, it still came down to this, her question mark, she thought while she drew her sword from her waist and grabbed the golden shield strapped to her back. She had not wanted to use lethal force against him but he was leaving her no choice. Come. She shouted to provoke him and the Kryptonian rushed at her like a wild beast. A battle cry erupted from her chest and the ground under her feet ruptured as she exploded forth. Bang. The sound that came from the white and gold armored demigoddess bashing with her shield into the god-like man traveled for dozens of miles and the shockwave it generated flattened the forests below and massacred any living beings in it. As he watched the footage filmed by Brother Eye, even Maxwell Lord's heart shuddered in terror at the terrible strength. It was beyond anything that he had ever seen in his entire life. Miles opposite of each other, both Superman and the Amazon princess created another pair of craters as their bodies were slammed back by the force reflected from their clash. Logically, due to her using her shield, Wonder Woman should have recovered faster as she was not as hurt by their collision as Superman. But the reality proved to be different. He rose up to his feet even faster than her and he once again broke the sound barrier, flying at her. Both of his fists raised above his head, he was going to slam them onto her like a hammer. But when he got to two feet away from her, a wet, squelching sound was heard and his body suddenly froze in midair. A feeling of pain like he had never felt before assaulted his brain. When he looked down, he saw only the handle of a sword sticking out of his stomach. His bloodthirsty eyes were cleared up and his mind became lucid. The pain was so intense that it momentarily cancelled Maxwell Lord's control over his mind. Diana, I. He could not find his words. He was in shock. Shocked at relishing he had been trying his utmost to kill Wonder Woman, that it was not Darkseid. Shocked at relishing that someone had been mind controlling him from the start. Shocked at finding out that the Amazon princess went as far as to run her sword through him to stop him. I'm sorry, Superman, Diana said. It was the only way to stop you. The Kryptonian stumbled backwards and almost fell but the princess caught him and stabilized his body. Then, she guided him to sit down on the ground. Another cry of pain came from him when she pulled her sword out of his stomach. Blood started to flow from the hole in his body like a river but she was not worried. Although it was a grievous wound that would have killed a lesser being, it was not enough to end a Kryptonian's life. As long as the yellow sun shone above his head, he would recover. Don't leave this place if you don't want to start murdering innocents. You don't know when Maxwell's control over you will resume. Hold on just for a few minutes. I'm going to deal with him myself. The princess split the air with her sword and she flicked off all of the blood on it before sheathing it back to her waist. She also strapped her golden shield on its place on her back and then she flew away without sparing him a second glance. She was in Chile, in Southern America, while Maxwell Lord was all the way over the ocean, in Europe, in Switzerland. A commercial plane would take over 12 hours to cover that distance. Even the fastest military jets in the world would still need around two to three hours to cover that distance. She had no time to waste. After a short prayer dedicated to Hermes, her speed increased way beyond her usual flight speed when her powers were sealed. Asterism. Though the building had become a ruin after Superman ran Wonder Woman through it and flew into space, Maxwell Lord had not moved away from it. It was not like he had much time to do that either. His eyes had been glued to the screen that was playing the life and death battle between Superman and Wonder Woman. And it was only a few minutes after the end of the fight that the rest of the building shook as the Amazon landed next to him. Though he was inwardly shocked at her speed, he had never thought anyone could fly from Southern America to Europe in a matter of minutes, his face was as composed and relaxed as ever. Bravo, he said sarcastically and clapped his hands. Most impressive. To think that. But the warrior princess was not in the mood to entertain him. Her golden lasso of truth was swung in the air and thrown at him. The billionaire was tied up and immobilized in an instant. End this now. She said aggressively. No. End it. She screamed and lifted him in the air by the neck. Though he was choking, Maxwell's only reaction was to laugh. 
with difficulty, he said. You and I both know that wound is not enough to put Superman out for good. Any minute now he'll arrive here and start this all over again. And he will keep coming at you until you either kill him or he kills you. He snapped out of your control when I stabbed him. He knows your illusion was not real. She retorted. Oh, but it seemed real for him. And it will become real again once the shock from being stabbed goes away. How do I stop it? Question mark, tell me. She commanded and the billionaire was compelled by the lasso of truth to speak. You can't. Unless you kept him tied with your lasso at all times. But you can't do that, can you question Mark and the next time, I will send him to kill Batman, or you, or maybe kill his own parents with his own hands. Superman is mine. I'll never let him go. She threw him to the ground and then she smashed him against one of the still standing walls of the room. Tell me how to free him of your control. She ordered. Maxwell Lord looked at her without any fear. Kill me, he said. That is the only way. She looked him in the eye. He did not avoid meeting her eyes either. But then, his head was abruptly twisted to the side. In the last moments of his life, Maxwell Lord only saw the wall behind his back. The Amazon princess snapped his neck. Little did Wonder Woman know that her and Superman's violent and brutal clash had been filmed and televised from start to finish. That the world was now aware of the metahuman's potential for destruction. Little did she know that millions of people had watched her as she killed Maxwell Lord by snapping his neck. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.